guys, welcome back to the Voice of Diabetes. This is Diana Bitucci, and if you are new, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notification so that you won't miss any videos I upload. Today we are going to talk about gestational diabetes. That's right, gestational diabetes, where we will talk about diabetes during pregnancy. Pregnancy is usually a very uh, special time for a mom. It's very exciting as the family is getting ready to bring in a new uh, member into the family but it can also be unfortunately very overwhelming. The moms who are diagnosed with gestational diabetes are very anxious, they're very nervous. They come in, they're very emotional. Today, I wanted to create a video to give you a little bit more education about gestational diabetes. That is what I treat on a daily basis. It is a, my specialty, um, obviously endocrinology, which entails gestational diabetes. What is gestational diabetes? At first, before we even do that, I wanna let you know that nearly 10% of moms in the United States develop gestational diabetes. So you are not alone. There's millions of moms that go through this. Um, so the good thing about that is that we know a lot about gestational diabetes. We know how to manage it very well. Gestational diabetes is a type of diabetes that is, that is diagnosed only during pregnancy. So you have to remember, I am not talking about pre-existing diabetes and then you become pregnant. This is for a mom that has never had diabetes before and she was diagnosed while she was pregnant. Normally we diagnose this around 24 weeks to 28 weeks. That is when we normally test for uh, gestational diabetes. So the mom will go in, she'll go in the morning, she'll drink something very sweet. We call that the uh, glucose tolerance test and we test the blood sugars and we see how the body reacts one hour after that, two hours and three hours and so forth. And that is how we're able to determine if the mom has what we call gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes is really when the blood sugars are too high during pregnancy. What causes this to happen? Why does a mom develop gestational diabetes? There are a couple of things. So the placenta, which is responsible for transporting nutrients to the baby, and the main reason why the baby is able to grow is because the placenta is transporting nutrients back and forth. Unfortunately, with gestational diabetes, the placenta is throwing these hormones at the mom that cause the mom to become what we call insulin resistant. What insulin resistance is, it means that the pancreas is producing enough insulin. Think of insulin as a key. And then you have these doors, which are the cells, where the glucose, the insulin takes a glucose and puts it inside the cell. It opens up the, the, the door, the cell, so that the insulin can get inside it. When we have insulin resistance, we, the pancreas is producing all of these keys or insulin, but the insulin has nowhere to go. The doors are closed. The key, it just simply is not working. It, it's unable to open the door so that the glucose can get inside. So now the glucose just kind of hangs around in the bloodstream and it just rises and rises because it has nowhere to go. And now with insulin resistance, the pancreas needs to produce more and more insulin. But so during pregnancy, the pancreas needs to produce three times more insulin than it normally would. And it says, hey, I can no longer do this. I'm tired. I can only produce this much. But the mom is requiring more and more insulin and the pancreas cannot do, cannot function anymore. So the sugars levels rise. That's kind of the anatomy of how, why the moms may develop gestational diabetes. So you're probably wondering, well, what does this mean for me? What does gestational diabetes mean for the baby? How does this affect anything? Well, once the mom is diagnosed with gestational diabetes, we act quickly, and I mean quickly. We see them almost immediately. It doesn't matter what the availability is, we make room for that patient. Pregnancy is only for, you know, lasts about nine months. By the time you're diagnosed around 24 weeks, there's only so much time we have to get things under control. And two, we don't want this to affect the baby, so we need to act very quickly. You're probably wondering, well, what is uncontrolled? What does gestational diabetes mean? If we don't treat it, what, what happens? Possible complications is that, you know, if the blood sugar levels are too high in the bloodstream, remember earlier I told you that the placenta transports everything uh, to the baby? Well, unfortunately, in this case, it also transports excessive glucose. So possible complications of gestational diabetes are that the baby can become too large. So the baby is being overfed all of this glucose um, because remember the placenta is transporting nutrients from the mom to the baby. Well, unfortunately, in this case, it's also transporting too much sugar to the baby. 
So the baby is just growing and growing and growing. We call that that baby that is uh, growing too, too large because of excess glucose, we call the macrosomia babies. The mom who has a very large baby will have to deliver via C-section. Um, so that is an operation where they cut the mom's stomach, um, you know, muscle where they can get the baby out. It can lead to more complications, usually longer hospital stays. It can expose the mom to infection um, and longer healing time. So we do everything that we can to try to prevent this as much as possible. Obviously, a large baby can also cause discomfort to the mom. Uh, while they're pregnant, they're uh, born vaginally, they can have issues where their nerve damage at the shoulder can can be damaged during birth. So really, these are very serious things that we don't, you know, we don't want to get into and we never want any moms to be exposed to. So this is why we take this very seriously and we act very quickly. Another one is high blood pressure. So moms with gestational diabetes are at higher risk than moms without uh, gestational diabetes for having higher blood pressure. High blood pressure can lead to what we call preeclampsia, where the mom has swelling in the fingers, swelling in, in the toes and they are just very uncomfortable. This can lead to preterm labor, it can lead to uh, seizures, and many other complications that you know we never, never want the mom to experience or the baby to experience. Um, this is why really it is so imperative that we treat these moms very quickly, and the mom's early plans or following the treatment plans, whatever they may be, it varies for each mom. Um, but it's very crucial that you are following all the, all the recommendations and you're staying in very, very close contact with your OB and then if you were referred to an endocrine, making sure that you're following with both of them very closely and that there's, there's an open communication amongst the, um, the, the team member. So another thing that, you know, gestational diabetes, if uncontrolled, it can lead to what we call hypoglycemic state for the baby. So I mentioned earlier, the baby's being overfed all of this sugar. So once they're born, uh, they're used to all this uh, sugar overload. Now they're not getting any sugar because we don't feed babies sugar. So their blood sugar levels go too low because the pancreas is still producing a lot more insulin than needed, not recognizing that the baby is no longer getting that sugar that they were getting while they were you know, in utero. And then the blood sugars can go way too low, what we call hypoglycemic. These babies have to be monitored very closely. Sometimes they need to be hooked up to IVs if needed. So at all costs, we really don't want to put the baby through this. And it can be very hard for the mom to, you know, to, to see this. So we really really try to prevent and do everything that we can so the good news is that you know i am very proud to say that all the moms that i treat deliver very healthy babies they don't have any of these complications they're working so hard during pregnancy we're working very closely together the mom will come in for the first time we talk about diet plan i'll start the mom on on a different the diet plan sometimes they're not doing anything wrong it's just that they're not eating a well balanced maybe they're having too too many carbs at one time and not enough carbs at a different time their balance is kind of off so we talk about a nice diet plan that will work for them and i follow them very closely it is imperative that they're testing their blood sugars the recommendation is four times a day. Now that's individualized. I have moms that test six times a day. I have moms that might test even more depending on where they stand in, in the spectrum. We want a fasting blood sugar and I have them um, test their blood sugar one hour or two hours after they eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So that's equal to four fasting, one hour after breakfast, one hour after lunch, and then one hour or two hours after dinner. And uh, diabetes association guidelines, Fasting blood sugar should normally be less than 95 during pregnancy. And then one hour after a meal, it should be less than 140. Two hours after a meal, it should be less than 120. The moms document all of these. They, they report on a weekly basis. Sometimes I have them reporting every couple of days actually to make sure that you know I'm catching things early because if this is not, if the diet alone along with lifestyle changes, I'll encourage the mom to stay more active, walking if that's permittable by the, by the OB. I'm always in, staying in close contact with OB and I tell the mom to make sure she consults with the OB first uh, because remember, I'm treating the gestational diabetes but the OB knows everything about the baby, the sides are monitoring, everything that's going on with the baby. So sometimes certain physical activities are not encouraged during pregnancy 
and those are obviously beyond my scope of practice because I'm only treating endocrinology disorders. So I tell the mom, hey, make sure that you're consulting with the OB. Sometimes I'll even call the OB as the patient is in the room and we'll say, hey, you know, is a 15 minute walk okay? Is a 20 minute walk okay? They'll say, oh yes, absolutely, that's okay for the patient, but make sure they're not lifting anything heavy. You know, whatever it may be, those uh, parameters we discuss with the OB. So make sure that you are consulting with your healthcare team, with anyone who's managing you. It doesn't matter who it is. If they're treating your gestational diabetes and they're managing the pregnancy, everything needs to be discussed with everyone to make sure that everything is okay. Because back to that, if usually diet is not sufficient enough, I'll have the mom, we start insulin because we, we know insulin is safe for both the mom and the baby. So then we monitor things very closely. Body, remember, is a lot more resistant during pregnancy. It's, it's requiring a lot more insulin on its own just because of the pregnancy alone. And sometimes our bodies just can simply not keep up with that and we need the extra help. So insulin is not a bad thing. It's a very good thing during pregnancy because it's very safe and it really helps the moms manage their blood sugars. And you know, I'm very happy to say that all the moms that I treat have delivered very healthy babies. They've never needed any higher level of care. They've gone to term. Uh, we haven't seen these complications. So um, I just wanna give so much credit to the moms who are doing everything that they can, who are working so hard because this is not easy. It's, it's a very scary time. But fortunately, there are so many moms that deliver very healthy babies and don't have any issues uh, you know, during, uh, you know, during this process of dealing with gestational diabetes. So I give you guys so much credit. So a lot of moms will come in and say, hey, how can I prevent gestational diabetes? I'll give you tips on how you can reduce the risk of uh, d developing gestational diabetes. Normally, if you are overweight and you are planning a pregnancy, I ask moms to lose the extra weight. For exercising on a regular basis, I normally recommend five days at least of moderate intensity exercise walking, brisk walk, and eating very healthy, lots of vegetables, lots of lean protein, and you know, lower in carbohydrates, not excess carbohydrates. Those are the recommendations. Um, you know, and obviously during gestational diabetes, I recommend healthy eating as well. I recommend staying as active as, as tolerated by the OB and in consultation with the OB, always in consultation with your with your medical team. I never wanna give advice because every patient is individualized, everyone is different. You may require something different. Another patient might, might do better with something else. So you cannot take any advice from this. It's just meant to be very educational and informative. So if you are diagnosed, you know what to expect. Normally for the moms, um, once they deliver the baby, gestational diabetes is no longer present. The numbers come back to normal, maybe because the placenta is no longer present. It's no longer throwing all those hormones at the mom where the body cannot handle. I give the moms about two to three months to settle in with their newborn, um, kind of settle in with a new member in the family. Then I have them come in again in the office and I do either another glucose tolerance test or I monitor the hemoglobin A1Cs on a regular basis. 50% of moms with gestational diabetes develop diabetes later on in life. So I tell these moms, you know, ways to reduce or delay this from happening is staying as active as you can, eating healthy, exercising regularly and making sure that they're, they're checking their blood sugars at least once a year. I have the moms, if they're not following us any later, sometimes we'll discharge the moms because they don't need to see specialty anymore, but I ask them to follow up with primary care and have their blood sugar checked. Their hemoglobin A1C is checked at least once a year or sooner if needed to monitor if they are developing any pre-diabetes or diabetes. So that oh, another question is, is my child, so is that baby who was born to a mother who had gestational diabetes at a higher risk for developing diabetes? Unfortunately, the answer is yes, they are. Um, they are more likely to develop obesity and diabetes, type 2 diabetes later on in life. But I ask the moms you know, to initiate very healthy lifestyles, making sure less screen time and the child is being very active, involved in sports. And obviously we can reduce that possibility or delay it for as much as we can. Again, I wanna thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, please comment below.